welcome to Dare to Be Headlines, episode number 10, part number 2, right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, your Canadian wrestling podcast that talks about the Dare to Be and No Holds Barred on anything we say, pun intended. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Barred WP. You can follow myself at Real Kyle Masters, and you can follow my co host at Corporate Cappy on Twitter as well. If you want to follow, follow us on Instagram, no holds barred WP is where you can find us on there. If you want to listen to any episodes on the go, iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and Spreaker is where you can find us. Spreaker is a glorious podcast app that is available for all Android and Apple devices. It is free to download, free to make a profile, and you can chat with us when we are live on the air and it lets you listen to all previous episodes of the podcast. If you want to watch any video versions of the podcast, we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash NHBWR. You can also find 2K content unboxings and all sorts of videos on there. So hit that subscribe button and that bell icon for all upload updates. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host of WWE Headlines, Kyle Masters. And guys, welcome to part number two of WWE Headlines. If you missed part number one, it is live everywhere right now on YouTube, Spreaker, iTunes, and Stitcher. So go check it out. We talk about... um, The possibility of the WrestleMania 34 uh, main event being next. We also have some news on the Iconic Duo and more like that. So go check that out. It is live right now. Um, As for part number two today, guys, the big story is uh, John Cena's road to WrestleMania. I got some news about that. And actually, Undertaker has spoken out about this WrestleMania match. And we will take it with a grain of salt because the dead man likes to be... Um, cryptic, if I can put into words here. So I'll read that to you guys once we get to that point. But that is the big story today. We also got some news on... Let me just bring it up here. Uh, NXT superstar calling out John Cena. We also have plans for Stephanie McMahon and Ronda Rousey's future in the company. Um, do they want to go in the same route as Mr. McMahon and Steve Austin? I got some news for that. Um, I have some news on Spox, uh, Sports TV looking for a major push in order to be TV programming. Um, also, a former WWE champion uh, reported to be done with in-ring competition in a WWE. I also got some news on Adrian Neville. Is he in talks with Triple H and 205 Live? I got some news about that. I got an update on the Broken Universe and Jeff Hardy. With uh, This is a request by one of our Twitter fans, Cupidgirl125. She requested we give an update on that. I have some updates on that. I don't have anything on Dean Ambrose so far, Cupid Girl. If you do have any, uh, message me and DM me on Twitter, and I'll get it onto the Part 3 news uh, tomorrow. And lastly, but not least, we have some news on two, not one, but two Battle Royals possibly in the works at WrestleMania 34. So uh, that is the news for today, guys. So, you know, I'm going to try something different without further ado. And this is uh, to my co-host, Corporate Cappy. Um, Without further ado, let's hit the headline music. That's right. Uh, bringing back the headline music, Corporate Cappy really loved it, so I'll bring it back just for him right before I start the news. So let's get right into it, guys, and start off with the big story, and that is John Cena's current plans and road to WrestleMania 34. Uh, one of the most interesting topics in the WWE today is the status of The Undertaker heading into WrestleMania 34. The Undertaker versus John Cena dream match has been, a ru- uh, has been rumored for several months now, and it appears to be happening with Cena dropping hints about it. However, the, d- the latest WWE rumors have revealed that The Undertaker might actually be retired. Um, as recapped by WWE.com, Cena aired his frustrations in a segment on Monday Night Raw, if you guys missed that, uh, go check it out, about having uh, not having a match at WrestleMania 34. The 16-time WWE World Champion failed to win the Royal Rumble match as well as the Elimination Chamber match uh, last Sunday. Cena even name-dropped The Undertaker during his promo, but he noted that the dream match is not going to happen. Um... The 40-year-old legend announced that he is going to SmackDown Live to look for some opportunities to have a match at WrestleMania 34. Cena was successful, and he was given a chance by Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan by having him face off and against rival WWE Champion AJ Styles. With his surprising victory over Styles, Cena has earned the right to be added to the WWE Championship match at Fastlane. Now, I'm going to stop it right here. You think about it. <laughs> about We have our concerns about Roman Reigns and his push, but it's like they're slowly pushing John Cena as well. Just behind the curtain. Like, you see, you think he's got the Royal Rumble shot. He failed. They put him in the Elimination Chamber. So, basically, the main event of Raw, uh, the Raw pay-per-view. Now, he's going into the main event of the SmackDown pay-per-view for the WWE Championship. <laughs> you can't get any more push than that. Um, so, hopefully, this leads to Undertaker and Cena. So, I got some news about that. Let's continue on here. Um, Styles will now defend his WWE title in a six-pack challenge against Cena, Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, Baron Corbin, and Dolph Ziggler. 
There were rumors of Cena versus Shinsuke Nakamura, but it appears WWE is heading in a different direction. Now, I chose that they should have gone that direction uh, to begin with. I think Cena should have come on to SmackDown. He should have challenged Shinsuke Nakamura for his for his Royal Rumble spot. They even had that little stare down on the ramp. You guys remember? They're both pointing at the sign. Of course, everyone points at the sign WrestleMania season, but <laughs> um, they even had that spot. It would have made more sense. I think it would have boosted Fastlane and probably would have upped the ticket sales. You have one-on-one Cena Nakamura put on an epic match at Fastlane for that shot. And you have Nakamura beat John Cena, looking, making him look strong going into WrestleMania to face AJ Styles. I think that would have made more sense. But for some reason, they decided to go with the six-pack challenge. Um, the Undertaker was not mentioned on SmackDown Live, however. And there is a possibility that the dream match against Cena might not occur. Is the Undertaker even medically cleared? This is the big question here. According to Justin Barrasso of Sports Illustrated, again, I mentioned this yesterday on the news, Justin Barrasso, take with a grain of salt, please. Do not take whatever he says uh, credible. I, I know he works for Sports Illustrated, which is a really good sporting news source. Just don't really take anything he says seriously. There's been news articles he's broken that have never become true. So, again, take it with a grain of salt. He says that The Undertaker will not be working WrestleMania 34, despite several workout videos of him being posted on social media. Brassel noted that Cena's request to WWE to have the feud with Samoa Joe or Rey Mysterio. So he's saying Cena has requested to do Samoa Joe or Mysterio. Joe, and this is the same guy that, that said that Mysterio, the first said that Mysterio and Cena are going to go out at WrestleMania. So again, grain of salt. Uh, Joe is currently out with an injury, while Mysterio, who returned the Rumble, is scheduled to face Ju- Jushin Thunder Liger at the no, uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong Style Evolved later this month, which is like almost before WrestleMania. So it's really weird how he thinks that Mysterio and Cena are going to go at it. But maybe it'll be like an open challenge or something at Mania, and Mysterio answers it. I hope not, but you never know. Uh, the report added that Mysterio getting it. Mysterio is getting an amazing reaction to the Royal Rumble, or ha- him getting that amazing reaction at the Rumble led to Cena picking him. Uh, for one potential WrestleMania 34 opponent. Mysterio was reportedly backstage on SmackDown Live, which I found out that are not true. So Justin Barrasso, again, here is the spot where he's not uh, fully accurate uh, this Tuesday to finalize a deal. I heard he wasn't there. I actually read from a credible source that he wasn't there. Uh, The WWE wants former WWE and World Heavyweight Champion to work a full-time schedule, but Mysterio is only interested in being part-time. I don't know why they want to work this guy full-time, man. I don't think he should be full-time. I think for sure he should be on 205 Live rather than the main roster. I think he could benefit from boosting that brand that's now going in a different direction with the reigns of Triple H. So uh, we'll see what happens with that in his contract. But Cena versus Mysterio might not have the same interest as Cena versus Taker, but it's a big match nevertheless. I really don't think so. I think that's just basic basic raw match i mean we saw the first thing that comes to mind with mysterio and john cena was the that tournament during the cm punk era that they had in the finals and cena basically buried them so i really don't want to see that again I, there wasn't anything exciting about that match so uh, hardcore fans prefer cena versus joe but uh the lat the latter is out uh, the latter is out injured and he may not be clear in time for wrestlemania 34 nevertheless it should be noted that these are still purely speculative speculative at the moment or speculative at the moment my bad <laughs> please take it with a grain of salt yet like i just said um so john cena was also called out by an nxt star with these uh, rumors coming out uh while there be superstar john cena is still trying to earn his way at wrestlemania one nxt star is calling him out for a match this very or that very weekend Cena will be stepping into a championship match at Fastlane with a six-pack challenge. He'll be trying to win the WWE title for the 17th time and head to WrestleMania 34 as champion to defense against the Royal Rumble winner Shinsuke Nakamura. I really hope that doesn't happen. I don't think we should be getting that WrestleMania. Um, it, it needs to be Styles and Nakamura. This match has to happen. If they don't make it happen, then it'll never happen down the road. Um, however, he has now been officially called out by a superstar who has significantly boosted his resume since leaving WWE and returning back to NXT. That is none other than Ethan, uh, Ethan Carter III, or as a lot of people call him, a.k.a. EC3, sent out a tweet in which he called out John Cena. Carter, who went by Derek Bateman, if anyone remembers back in his, his previous WWE days, I remember that, uh, told Cena he'll give him a match at NXT TakeOver New Orleans pay-per-view. The tweet has now garnered over 4,500 likes. I actually think it's almost near 10,000 now. And many fans' responses. However, John Cena is not yet among those responses. Cena has been very active on Twitter since then, but has but was uh, but it was to mention how great a day he had at the Make a Wish Foundation. It is possible that Cena either didn't see the tweet or doesn't want to get anyone's hopes up just yet, including EC3s. 
After all, Cena is, is still has an opportunity to win the championship in just a few weeks at Fastlane. Ethan Carter III was in Dirty B before, but never had a high-profile match per se. Taking on John Cena at WrestleMania 34 weekend would certainly boost... Be a big boost for him. However, WWE seems to hesitant to take chances uh, too early with their NXT stars, especially from TNA. Uh, that said, the creative team and powers that could always have EC3 add more to the to this by showing up on SmackDown or even Fastlane to challenge Cena. Uh, that would be pretty cool. Can you imagine EC3 showing up out of nowhere? You know that the, he get a good reaction because there are a lot of fans out there that know of EC3. And I guarantee you he get a big reaction probably at Fastlane more than the SmackDown episode. Um it would be similar to when Kevin Owens showed up several years ago to call out Cena. I remember that uh, to go to got to get a match with him at a WWE pay per view event when uh, back when Kevin Owens was still the NXT champion. Um, so that would be pretty cool. Um, EC it would definitely boost the Takeover New Orleans card because John Cena is on. You're going to get more eyes, more of the main roster and casual eyes on NXT. I think that'd be a good way to promote NXT if they ever decided to do that. I just don't see it happening. Uh, Cena is definitely going to be at WrestleMania, not the NXT TakeOver New Orleans. I'd love for him to do both, but hey, it's John Cena. And this late in his in his career, he can do both right now. But uh, as of right now, I'm still sticking with Undertaker, John Cena. But that'd be pretty cool. EC3 and Cena, I'm sure they can build a pretty good story. Um, so I got some news on how The Undertaker speaking out about his WrestleMania messenger. So yeah, he has spoken out. Um, this week, The Undertaker and Kane reunited as the Brothers of Destruction for a fundraiser benefiting the Mario run of the Big Red Machine. Glenn Jacobs drew a lot of attention by having his brother, quote-unquote, appear with him. And at the event, The Undertaker spoke on a possible return. As reported by Wrestling Inc., the event was held at the Rothschild Catering and Conference Center in Knoxville, Tennessee, which is where Jacobs is running for mayor. The, the event was billed as the first time ever that Kane and the Undertaker have appeared together outside a WWE event, which is pretty cool. Like you think about it, all the years Taker and Undertaker, or Undertaker and Kane have been together. This is the first time they've been seen together as the Brothers of Destruction outside of a WWE event. So that's pretty cool, and it's to help obviously Kane's um, uh, mayor electoral status and get him into uh, as a mayor. Um, of course, it's not surprising that the talk of WWE came up while fans visited with them, and many asked about Taker making a return to WrestleMania 34. Um, Mike Johnson of PW Insider stated that he was actually asked about uh, a comeback, and by way of ringside news, it wasn't what anyone really wanted to hear. Uh, this is quote unquote uh, from a fan that was there. He says uh, there were some fans that asked him, the Undertaker, about returning and why he w- uh, why he could have very well been working with them. He kind of gave the impression of ah, uh, don't hold your breath or don't wait for that one, but we'll see. If I was Undertaker and I was returning, I certainly would want to keep the mystique and aura going and hiding things, you know? And I would for sure. I think Undertaker is playing people. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and believe that. Maybe he's not. Maybe he is telling the truth and he's really done right now. So we'll see. Um, Who knows? Really, it's who knows. I I love the surprise factor. It's like, why would he just sit there and, oh, yeah, by the way, I am going to face John Cena. Don't you worry. Just stay patient. I'm pretty sure you wouldn't be telling people because they're going to spread the news like that over Twitter and then, it's all going to be ruined, and again, like I said, the aura will be just gone. So, <laughs> of course, he's not going to tell people that he's actually coming back. So, <laughs> I think their fans over there were hoping for a little too much there. Um, so, the rest of Scargle says, WWE is not stupid, but they're going to give, and they're not going to give away anything about the return of The Undertaker before they are ready to do that. He's been in the business too long to reveal anything to fans that he isn't supposed to announce, and they're... And that is whether he is returning or not. Well, plain simple, duh. <laughs> I, don't, I wouldn't expect him to tell people right there. Like, again, like I just said, like, he wouldn't just sit there and be like, someone going, out, oh, you're going to finish John Cena in WrestleMania? And he'd be like, oh, yeah, for sure, man. Don't worry about it. <laughs> He's not going to tell people that. Um, it's not out of the question for last year's WrestleMania 33 to have been the last time that fans ever see The Undertaker in a match. Then again, he could very well return for one in New Orleans to fight John Cena or anyone chosen by WWE. Everything is up in the air right now, and his words on a possible return don't seem to lend a lot to coming back, but it's not like Triple H and Vince McMahon will let you know until they want you to know. Um, so, uh, my opinions on this, again, like you just heard, like I know Undertaker's not going to tell people. It's really tough to tell what's going to go down here. Like He's been training like crazy, and usually we only see these videos really when he's on training for a return. We haven't seen any of these. I don't think I remember seeing these training videos like over the summer or over the fall. Like, do you remember? If anyone has, let me know. I don't remember Michelle McCool ever breaking those videos out of him training other than WrestleMania season. And that's when we know he's coming back for a match. So 
I'm just going to go ahead and guess that he is coming back for a match. And it's probably going to be against John Cena. Um, I don't see why it couldn't be any why it should be anyone else. Um, it should be career versus career. I agree with a lot of you guys out there that say it should be career versus career, and that should be the end of it. Um, I'd be okay with Cena beating him because right now the streak doesn't mean anything. He's already lost twice, so really the streak is out the door already. But they should have a pretty good match. Hopefully, uh, see, Taker looks in great shape. Maybe that hip surgery fixed a bunch of things, and a lot of people thought the hip surgery would like cut him out, and that would that'd be it. But Hopefully, he's a lot better than we saw last year. I mean, if you guys remember the Reigns match, putting all the nostalgia and all the uh, emotion aside, the match wasn't really that good. So, hopefully, he can have a semi-decent or a semi-decent better match with Cena just to end it and call the career. Everyone wants to see Cena and Taker go at it. It's an ultimate dream match. I think it needs to be done, and then Taker can ride off into the sunset. Be, again, like I said yesterday, be the, the head Hall of Fame name for next year's Hall of Fame, and then that's it for the dead man at WrestleMania. Um... So, let's move on now to some more news here. There are going to be plans for... Oh, yeah, but let me know, guys, what you guys think. Do you want to see John Cena and Undertaker? Let me know down in the YouTube comments or tweet us at NoHoldsBarWP. Um, I know there's a lot of mixed reactions around this. Let me know and what you guys and what you would do with John Cena at WrestleMania. How about that? Um, so, we'll move on to some more news here. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, there are be plans for Stephen McMahon and Ronda Rousey's feud for the future. Are they trying to do the whole McMahon-Austin thing again? Hear the news about that. Uh, Ronda Rousey has already made a big impact in the WWE ever since becoming a superstar. Rousey has resumed her feud with Stephanie McMahon, and she appears to be heading to WrestleMania 34. With all signs pointing towards a mixed tag match at WrestleMania 34, Darby already has future plans for the Ronda-Stephanie rivalry. Uh, uh, as recapped by WWE.com, Rousey officially joined Monday Night Raw after signing a contract at the Elimination Chamber. Rowdy was greeted by General Manager Kurt Angle, Commissioner Stephanie McMahon, her husband Triple H. Things got a little bit awkward and cringeworthy at the start, but they picked up towards the end of the segment. Rousey put Triple H through a table before Stephanie came to her husband's aid by slapping the former woman's bantamweight champion. Stephanie ran following a death stare by Rousey, who signed her contract. According to Ramona Shelbourne of ESPN, the slap was legitimate as Ronda had a handprint welt on her face backstage. The next night on Raw, Rousey demanded an apology from Stephanie, and it was given. However, Triple H sucker punched Angle to <laughs> the famous sucker punch in the picture that's surrounding Twitter right now and going all the way around. I, I can't. I'm dying at all the memes people are making out of it. It's literally hilarious. Um, however, Triple H sucker punched uh, Angle at the end of the show while Rousey tends to the fallen general manager. With WrestleMania 34 about a month away, it seems like Rousey will team up with Angle to battle the authority. And according to Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer, you guys know about him, the WWE has big plans for both women, but they specifically wanted Rousey to feud with Stephanie McMahon. The reasoning behind this is WWE wants to make a Stephanie a bigger star, with the rivalry drawing inspiration from the famed Stone Cold Steve Austin Vince McMahon rivalry during the Attitude Era. And this is quote unquote from Dave Meltzer. He puts Rousey is a major sports star. The idea that w- that she ha- she was the single most searched female athlete in the U.S. on the internet in 2017, a year she never competed and for the most part lay low in. Speaks volumes. The idea for the program is to make Stephanie a star outside just the world of pro wrestling. The Austin McMahon rivalry is the biggest rivalry in WWE history as it uh, catapulted the company to bigger heights. The feud helped the WWE defeat WCW and it filled with some of the greatest moments ever. So I can see them going in that direction with Ronda and Stephanie. I think that'd be a a smart idea to kind of redo kind of a rivalry like that if you're going to boost Rousey. Uh, this way, I think it's a smart move to do that. There's a lot of mixed reactions behind Ronda Rousey coming into the Derby, but you guys got to like sit back and and think about it for a sec. This girl's been training for over a year and a half to get into the ring. She's not going to be rusty. It's been her long, her long, her long dream of becoming a WWE superstar before she even got into mixed martial arts. If you if you know Ronda Rousey, she's been a huge fan ever since she was a kid. So you can't really give her shit for that because then you have to give shit for Bailey because Bailey is the exact same thing. She didn't go into the MMA route, but she was a long fan since she was a kid, and then she became a a WWE superstar. So like, if you're gonna give Ronda shit, you got to give Bailey shit. So I, I don't I don't see why you should be giving either girl shit. Um, I think Ronda and Stephanie, if they went in that direction of the Austin McMahon rivalry, it definitely would boost Ronda Rousey, and I think it would definitely boost Stephanie McMahon more of a heel than she already is. Um, they already have that authority in place, so I think they should do this. Do it this way. Just don't have Ronda Rousey overpowering to the point where she's squashing people that shouldn't be squashed. That's my only fear that they're going to do with her. I really hope it doesn't go in that direction. So 
I hope they're doing something big with this and it just doesn't go into that direction. I'd be very scared if it did if she started squashing like Sasha Banks, Bailey, and Asuka and Charlotte left and right. So um, they need to keep this this feud intensified between Ronda and Stephanie. Um, let's continue with this article here. With Ronda and Stephanie, there to be shifts its focus on the women's revolution. Uh, revolution. It has its ups and downs, but the company continues to make history with women's with the women's division. Rousey is a big shot uh, to the WWE's arm, and she certainly will help the company gain more casual fans. However, it should be noted that these are just speculative at this point, but if it's true, the fans should expect the feud between Ronda Rousey and Stephanie Man to last for a year, or maybe even longer. Rousey is still green on the microphone, but she has quickly adapted the crowd to the crowd in her first three appearances since officially becoming a WWE superstar. Now, Yes, she's still green in the microphone. It's because I, I, sh- I don't like the, the the first part of her promo. It's like you look, think back at the Elimination Chamber and the first part of that, like when she's like sucking up to the fans and stuff, like this whole baby face Ronda, that's got to stop. Ronda is not a baby face. She's been the badass of USC for so long. She's got to stay that, that bad, badass rowdy Ronda Rousey. She's got to be the angry Ronda. No more smiling. The smiling is complete cringe. That's got to go. Uh, Ronda, I love the fan. No, that's got to stop. That's got to stop. You can't be doing that. Like, you can't get behind Ronda Rousey when she's doing shit like that. No, no. She's got to get that, that scrunched face. Like, after the Stephanie slap, that's the Ronda I want to see. She's got to start using swear words. She's got to get a... Uh, she got to get in with the the non casual fans. She got to get uh, with them. And it, to me, it's like you look at what Roman Reigns did with the, the the shoot promo he did. If you if you make Ronda cut shoot promos like that, you know she's gonna get over with the fans and all the fans for that matter. So you got to make her a badass. Don't make her any more cringe than they've already done it. Um, so I think I would definitely do that with Ronda Rousey. Go into that direction if they're gonna continue with the Stephanie Ronda for a long time. You got to make her like how about how much a badass Stone Cold was. Enough with this smiling baby face crap. It's not going to roll with Ronda Rousey, especially what she, uh, her background and what she's come from. They got to stop with that. I think she should be a, a huge heel or maybe a tweener, maybe like a Brock Lesnar type, um, if they're going to push Ronda, Ronda Rousey in that direction. So let me know what you guys think about Ronda Rousey uh, down in the YouTube comments below or on uh, Twitter at NoHoldsBar WP. Um, some more news here. Fox Sports TV looking for a major push in WWE TV programming. This is huge. This is huge. If we get signed, if WWE gets signed by Fox, uh, some big things could be, be changed to Raw and SmackDown. Uh, Fox Sports is reportedly prepared to make a major push to get WWE TV bro- uh, broadcast rights. And the deal could include airing Raw on Fox's broadcast channel. According to the report by Michael McCarthy of Sporting News, Raw would be featured on Fox while SmackDown would be aired on Fox Sports 1. Now, I think that wouldn't change for us Canadians up here. We still, like you guys get it on USA Network, we still get it on our sports channels, which is Sportsnet 360. We get both Raw and SmackDown on the same channel. So I don't think it would change for us, but for you Americans out there, this would be a huge change for you. Um, It was noted that Fox just won the rights to the NFL Thursday Night Football, and the deal with WWE would likely mean the end of the network's relationship with the UFC as their contract expires this year. Sources speaking with Sporting News cited Derby and UFC's likely rights fee being another reason for the change. As it was said, both companies are looking for up to $400 million per, or per year. It was noted that Fox would likely pay that money for Derby. UFC currently nets $120 million a year for their current right. Um, Derby's deal with USA expires on September 30th of 2019, and, they're, and they are currently in an exclusive negotiation period with each other until this spring. That would be spokeswoman Annie Kruger declined to comment on the sporting news about any ongoing negotiations bes- uh, besides noting that would be his U.S. television partner will be announced between May and September of this year. So huge, huge. And I heard that if they go to Fox, it's going to be changed. Fox is going to change it to two hours from nine to 11, that nine to 11 slot, which is big. I think Smack or raw could benefit from going back to that two hour slot. SmackDown is okay with that two hour slot. They just need to cut, the, uh, cut the more commercials and, uh, kind of retool how they book stuff. I think that's the only problem with SmackDown. Um, but this will be big, so we're going to know anywhere between May and September of this year if WWE is going to re-sign with USA Network or are they going to sign with Fox, and then we'll finally see the changes after September of next year. So not this year, next year we'll see the changes uh, to Fox. So big things, big things. Uh, I know it's so long away, but uh, it, it definitely means a big change for the wrestling company and the direction how they uh, book stuff because if Raw goes from three to two hours, they got to retool everything on Monday Night Raw, and that's their flagship show. So uh, we'll see what happens. Um, next bit of news, former WWE champion reported done with in-ring competition. Now, I'm 
I'm happy with this because I don't want him to be booked on TV anymore. And Corporate Cappy uh, definitely uh, told me, he was like, you must be happy, and I am. If you guys know, if you guys already know where I'm going with this, um, if you've heard it or not, uh, Big Show is reportedly done with in-ring competition in the WWE. Uh, the latest WWE rumor suggests that a former WWE champion is now officially done working matches with the company. As per wrestling news source, that will bring a close to a wrestling career that has spanned from 1995 in WCW to this past year in WWE. Unfortunately, fans, there was no last match for the for the superstar believed to be retired, but his career is certainly worthy of WWE Hall of Fame. Here's the latest de- details on why it's believed that the Big Show is officially done working matches with the WWE. On Wednesday, the Wrestling News Source website reported that Big Show's contract has expired at the end of February and that his he is not expected to continue working as an in-ring performer. They mentioned that he will probably pursue other work related to the company going forward in a similar manner to Mark Henry, who has been uh, speculated as retired from the ring as well. Uh, that that other... Sorry, I think I read that wrong. Uh, there's other work... The other work that the big show could be doing would be as a WWE brand ambassador or a backstage producer. In addition, it is likely big show would probably continue to mentor other superstars as they look to launch the careers on raw SmackDown live or in NXT. Um, it was a pretty pig final match this past September against his, uh, his apparent Bron- uh, Braun Strowman. If you guys remember his, uh, this is basically his final match it was that Braun Strowman steel cage match on raw, uh, in September. That was the last time big show was in a match. Part of the match after Math saw Strowman slam show through the side of the steel cage wall at the end of the night. That ended up giving WWE storyline angle where it was reported that Big Show was hurt in the match and needed surgery. Outside WWE, Show really needed his uh, hip surgery, and it was originally reported by cage side seats that it was delayed due to the Hurricane Irma. Uh, didn't work. He didn't work in other any other matches after that. It had been speculated that Big Show would make a, a return at the Royal Rumble for his final appearance, but the pay-per-view came and went without Show participating. However, he has quite the resume uh, already, even without his that appearance. Show is former WWE champion as well as an ECW tag team, hardcore, and intercontinental champion, among other achievements during his career. He's also the second superstar to have won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, claiming to win or claiming the win at WrestleMania 31. It was mentioned by the wrestling news source that both Big Show and Mark Henry could still uh, show up at big events on television for WWE. Other stars have done that, uh, have done that, including the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Ric Flair, among others. Uh, of those superstars, Austin and Michael had recently made or have made recent appearances, and while they are haven't necessarily wrestled, they've been parts. Uh, they've had parts in the ring. You can remember the Stone Cold Stunner from Raw 25. The mini spot fest at WrestleMania 32 with Shawn Michaels. So, who knows? Maybe he'll come back and do a KO punch. I'm not really going to like it, but, you know, it is what it is. At least he's not uh, in storyline and, and wrestling uh, match after match, Raw after Raw, or at pay-per-views, uh, stealing time from younger stars. So, I'm happy with that. Um, Austin was involved in the Raw. Okay, I already said that. <laughs> um, it's also possible Big Show or Mark Henry could uh, get similar roles in the future. Either way, Big Show will certainly be missed in the ring, and, but thankfully he'll continue to, to be close to WWE in order to try to assist the product in being good as it can be. Now, I don't have a problem with Big Show not sticking around, like, or with sticking around. Um, I just don't want him, again, I don't want him wrestling and being in storylines. He could be a backstage guy. He could be a performance center guy to help the bigger wrestlers like himself or maybe just as big to, to help them uh, better their craft in the ring. I think they need guys like Big Show and Mark Henry there to, to teach them because they've been doing this for so long and they can really learn from them and how to, uh, to, how to stay or compete in the ring and, and compete with these other superstars and compete with these other fast superstars because the brand is really speeding up. So and the style of wrestling is speeding up. So I think they could it'd be a benefit for Big Show to stay around. So I'm not saying I don't want Big Show away from the company. I just don't want him in ring wrestling with people. So it is what it is. And if this is the end of Big Show, I mean, his career has been amazing like he's had such an incredible career with both wcw and WWE. so um definitely a surefied hall of famer so uh, if this is the end of big show's career thank you big show i'll say it. thank you big show <laughs> i know corporate cab is gonna love me saying that uh, i got an update on the status of neville it's just a short update here neville hasn't been seen on WWE programming since back in october there have been rumors about his potential return but several months that have now passed without any resolution to his current issues with WWE. We have an update on the situation here in the latest Wrestling Observer newsletter. Yep. Dave Meltzer says that the talks are back open with Neville and the WWE. 
Meltzer says that if they are able to work things out, the current time frame would be an April return. Neville's contract is currently frozen since he is not performing. This is so, this is similar to what happened with Daniel Bryan and Mysterio in the past, according to Meltzer. We will let you know if we hear anything more on Neville over the next few weeks. Now, I've also heard that he's in talks with Triple H. Triple H really wants him to come back to 205 Live now that Neville, or uh, not Neville, Enzo More is gone. And they can really push Neville the right way. And there's this big new creative direction change on 205 Live now that Triple H is running it. I believe that is true. I believe uh, he can bring a lot to 205 Live. He's extremely popular. We saw how popular he was when he left the company, how sad everyone was. So now with this new 205 Live, and if this is true that he could be going for an April return, that could be right after WrestleMania in the new, uh, as you can say, season of 205 Live, because right now they're mainly focused on that championship uh, tournament. Um, so I think once WrestleMania is done and 205 Live can start getting storylines out, uh, whatever Triple H has created for it, um, Neville could be a big piece of that and maybe go uh, come back to have a few with the main champion. I think I would like that. And get that, that heel Neville back, the king of the cruiserweights back. I, I love that. And Neville would bring a lot to the division, man. The, the division needs more superstars if they're looking to grow uh, 205 Live. And I think Neville can be a big help uh, behind that. Um Next bit of news here, and this is uh, by Cubagirl125 on Twitter's uh, request by her. She wanted an update on the Broken Universe. This is all I could find, Cubagirl125. I really looked deep into this, but uh, I got an update on it, and especially a WWE injury update on Jeff Hardy. Um, Jeff Hardy has been out of action since uh, October 2017 after he suffered an injury in the match on Monday Night Raw. Since his injury, Hardy has underwent surgery and has been working on all, or has worked on healing up and rehabbing his shoulder. Meanwhile, Matt Hardy is or ha, ended up we have finally pulled the trigger on the broken Matt Hardy gimmick, uh, retitling it to the woken Matt Hardy and inserted him into an underwhelming feud with Bray Wyatt. Uh, Wrestling Observer Radio reports that Jeff's rehabilitation is going well and he is training and hoping for a WWE return in time for WrestleMania 34. Uh, however, there is no word on whether he will be or he will not he will, whether or not he will be in the woken Matt Hardy storyline or return on his own. Um, so that'd be good. Like I mentioned before, I think it was in another news episode that if they do bring him back, maybe they don't, they don't bring him back at a hundred percent. Maybe he's tied into the Woken universe, but he doesn't, doesn't necessarily have a match. He's just part of it. Maybe he's uh, ringside with Matt Hardy. Uh, I don't think they need to bring him back at one full. They don't have to wait to be for him to be fully 100% to bring him back is what I'm trying to say. Um, so Jeff Hardy and Derby injury return update. Jeff Hardy, again, if you don't remember, he tore his rotator cuff and labrum in his shoulder. Uh, the surgery took place back in October, and it was a four to six month, uh, four to six month healing process. So, according to the host of the Wrestling Observer uh, Radio, Jeff Hardy is already working out. Uh, so he's been seen at the Performance Center. The timing is good because the, the bar just claimed that they have beaten everyone, and there is no one left. While this opens things up for the revival to possibly step in and challenge them, that is not a WrestleMania caliber match. Um, I don't know. I think that'd be a pretty good pre-show match. Uh, the Hardys returning or uh, reuniting to Battle the Bar is a huge match. I think that'd be pretty cool. Uh, Matt Hardy promises a great war. Because on the other hand, Woken Matt Hardy is working hard to make his Woken Matt gimmick work in a WWE, despite the lackluster promos and matches with Bray Wyatt. Sadly, the WWE have chosen, or has chosen to have a lot of uh, laughing and very little unique and exciting action to move, or to move the gimmick forward. On Twitter, Matt Hardy posted, The ultimate deletion is coming. That makes it sound like WWE might be willing to try to film a crazy match similar to the final deletion uh, from Impact Wrestling that helped Broken Matt gimmick skyrocket into popularity. Um, If Matt Hardy is preparing for a monster match with Bray Wyatt similar to the final deletion from Impact Wrestling, Jeff Hardy might be involved in the or might be involved in that instead of a tag team title scene. Now, Hardy has already filmed small vignettes on his own with Vanguard 1, the drone from Impact Wrestling, and Senior Benjamin has resurfaced as well. Um, if the WWE brings back things, or brings back these things that made Broken Matt fun and somehow managed to make Bray Wyatt interesting again, this could be a great place to reintroduce Jeff as Brother Nero. Jeremy Borash is now a WWE employee, so there's always a chance Hardy could salvage this gimmick. I think they're going to go in that direction. Um, he wouldn't be tweeting about this ultimate deletion uh, if they weren't going to do something like that. Um, 
I think they're going to add Jeff Hardy into it. I don't think we're going to uh, know that Jeff Hardy's back until we see this ultimate deletion. And I do believe uh, that Jeff Hardy will be part of it in some way. He doesn't necessarily have to be physical, but he's going to be there in some way, maybe to scare Bray Wyatt or to uh, intimidate him somehow. But uh, again, like I said, they don't necessarily, no, they don't necessarily have to bring Jeff Hardy back at 100%. They can bring him back and, and be in a less physical role until he's fully healed as Brother Nero. But I do believe they're going to go the Brother Nero route. Um, there's no room for him to be a singles guy on his own, so that'd be probably the only way they do it. Um, let's go into the last bit of news here, guys. WrestleMania 34 to have both men's and women's battle royal. Yes, we're gonna have two battle royals. Just like one, just because one's not enough, we gotta have two. There were previous there would be rumors saying that WrestleMania 34 card would not include the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal this year. It's now being said that by the same source that the pay-per-view will include this annual match, which will uh, t- which will take on added importance this year. In addition to the women will have, in addition, the, the women will have their own battle royal, which is being billed as the fabulous moolah battle royal. <laughs> Come on. Just because the men have the honor of the giant more battle royal, we got to pick an old woman superstar and go to the fabulous moolah battle royal or the Alundra blaze battle royal. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> I guess just to get away to get everyone on the card. <laughs> um, here's the latest details on the updated rumors involving these WrestleMania Battle Royal matches. On Friday, Sports Kitas. Yes, again, another news source to take with a grain of salt. So, Sports Kitas Jeremy Bennett reported that Wrestling Observer Radio host Brian Alvarez amended his previous comments about the WrestleMania 34 matches. This time, about during his discussion, he said that there are would be a men's and women's battle royal included with one of the pre-show card and the other on the main card. So I'm going to guess that they're going to put... Well, it's actually tough because they did put the Andre Memorial Battle Royal on the pre-show last year. So they could do it this year. Maybe the women's goes on the pre-show. I I see the women being part of the main card since they're all about this women's evolution and women's rights crap. They're definitely going to put that on the main card. Um while it's unknown with uh, which match will be on where on the card, one might expect the women's match would be a on the pre-show due to the fact that there are probably a few other women matches that could take priority over it on the main card this year. So that's pretty interesting. In particular, there is a Ronda Rousey expected uh, mixed tag match clash involving Cypher McMahon and Triple H. The men's will have an extra importance due to the upcoming HBO sports documentary, which is from Bill Simmons Media Group. The documentary, uh, appropriately called Andre the Giant, will focus on a legendary big man from professional wrestling earlier's career or early history. That hour and 25 minute long special will be available for viewing two days after WrestleMania has concluded. So Derby will want to want their pay per view match to give a boost. So yeah, I can definitely see that. Uh, the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal being on the main card and the women's being on the pre-show this year. Maybe they put the women's one next year on the main card. I don't know, something like that. <laughs> who cares, honestly, who cares? If they're not going to make anything of the women's one, if it's not going to mean anything, then who cares? Um, that means whoever wins this year's match could probably get a boost as well. It's unknown which superstar will participate in it, but there are likely to have many extra superstars available. A lot will depend on how the booking goes for other championships, including the United States and tag team titles. If there to be uses multiple superstars in those matches, it could limit who participates in the Andre match. One would think that if they were going to be some early favorites to win the match, they would include few they would include a few superstars who haven't seemed or haven't seemed to be near any titles lately. That could mean Rusev, Samoa Joe, or possibly Big Cass, depending on whether or not they are available to compete. Cass has been on the shelf for months due to injury as Samo- as has Samoa Joe. Rusev has never won the match, but would seem uh Deserving of an honor based on his recent popularity of with the fans with the Rusev Day. It's tough because it doesn't look like they want to push the Rusev Day thing, but I think it would definitely benefit Rusev and the whole Rusev Day thing. Because you know the WrestleMania crowd is going to be huge behind that Rusev Day thing if he's going to be in that match. I think that would be the smart way to do it and have Rusev win that match. I'd be all for Rusev winning. Um, Cesaro is the first winner of the trophy, but it's more likely that he'll be defending the tag team titles with Sheamus. Big Show was the second winner with recent uh, with the recent report and rumors that he's officially retired from in competition. He shall not be in the match. Barry Corbin has seemed to move on to bigger things for the uh, for the m- moment, but a lot will depend on his booking after Fastlane. As for Mojo Raleigh, one thing or one has to think that he's a lock to compete in the match for the second straight year. WWE fans will be able to see who participates in and win the women's fabulous Moolah Battle Royal and the men's Andre Joy Memorial Battle Royal when the WrestleMania 34 takes place Sunday. 
April 8th in New Orleans, Louisiana, where myself and Corporate Cappy are going to be. Now, let's talk about these things. Uh, again, overkill with two Battle Royals. Right off the bat, it's overkill. Um, as for the men's one, me and Corporate Cappy said it time and time again. They need to make it mean something. If you're going to make it mean something, the winner of the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royale should either get a number one contendership spot or a title match, for that matter, at a future pay-per-view. It shouldn't be just for the trophy that they stand beside for like three weeks, and then you never see the trophy ever again. It's going to be the same thing with the women. So if you're going to have a women's one, this fabulous Moolah Battle Royale, you got to make it mean something. they got to get a future title opportunity, or they become the number one contender for the respective championship on the brand that they are on. You got to make them mean something or else who cares? And you might as well put both of them into the pre-show if you're not going to do anything with them. So I really hope they do something with them and we get something out of it. I think Rusev Day could definitely benefit from a, 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 a Andre the Giant more Battle Royal win. As for the woman, if I could pick a winner of the first ever one, someone that's not being used, I can get pushed maybe a Bailey or you think on SmackDown... Uh, I don't know, Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch probably could be a big winner for the first one. I think I can go with Becky Lynch there. Um, but, yeah, you got it's got to mean something. It's got to... It's got to represent that you're going to get a title opportunity or you're going to be the number one contender going forward. Not just show up next to the trophy the next to SmackDown or Raw's. Stand beside it like this, and then that's it. You never see the trophy again. So, again, let me know what you guys think out there about these two announced... Uh, the potential of two Battle Royals. And if they are going to have two, who would be who would be the winners you would pick? Um, again, mine would be Rusev Day. I would think I would pick Becky Lynch for sure. But uh, let me know what you guys think down in YouTube comments below or tweet at us at no holds barred, uh, WP. That's all the news I got for today, guys. I'm going to have a part three tomorrow for sure. So take a look out for that uh, part three tomorrow. I haven't had a big news story for that yet. I'm really hoping something comes out today. Or if not, it's just going to be a bunch of little stories. So stay tuned for that. Um, I got this 2K show in the works right now. It's called Main Event. I'm still working out on the details and trying to get a YouTube Live. It's going to be a YouTube Live exclusive, so you guys will be able to sit back and watch it as I commentate it on YouTube Live. So I'm still getting that into works. I'm doing a lot of editing for this thing, so uh, bear with me for that. Other than that, guys, got to do the sponsor thing right at the end of the show here. I forgot to do it in the beginning of the show, but uh, go check out WrestleRumble.com. They do a fantastic pick em contest almost every pay-per-view, and they're doing one for Fastlane this year as well. www.wrestlerumble.com or follow them on Twitter at WrestleRumble. Again, like I said, they are doing a Fastlane pick em. If you're watching the video version of the podcast, it's up on the screen there for you. Um, pools to enter the Fastlane pick em, con- pick em contest are now open, and the prizes are first place of any championship belt of your choosing. They have a picture there on their website. You can choose any of them with a the real replica belt. And you get 50 MVP points. They have an MVP point system as well on there. You can check out and see how that works. So second to fifth place gets 50, just 50. Uh, Sixth to tenth place gets 45. 11th to 15th place gets 40. And 16th to 20th place gets 35. Now, I know you guys want to win a championship belt. All you have to do is pay $10 for one entry. And I think that you can pay for three or ten entries or something like that. Or five entries. It's all on the website for you. Go over there, russellrumble.com. And, uh... Enter in this great contest, guys. It's fantastic. And uh, win yourself a championship belt. Also, guys, go check out Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand t-shirt company. They are headed by former WWE superstar uh, Al Snow. A very, very good clothing company. I'm told that the hoodies are very, very comfortable. I'm probably going to order one soon. And, guys, I have a promo code for you to use. Thank you to at Jumbo. Ref123 on Twitter for lending us the promo code for you guys to lose. Use promo code Jumbo on checkout, and you can save yourself 10% on your order. And lastly but not least, ladies and gentlemen, go over to www.extremewrestlingshirts.com. They're a special, great website, special, great, a great special website specializing in pro wrestling and MMA apparel with over 50,000 t-shirts, sweatshirts, costumes, DVDs, pendants in stock right now. They got UFC stuff, they got tap out stuff, they got WWE, lots of loads of WWE merch. And again, like I said, there's there's a bunch of WWE stuff. It's basically like WWE shop, but guess what? Free shipping to the U.S. and Canada. Yes, there's no hidden fees. There's no hidden anything. There's uh, <laughs> you're, there's no fine print. You're, you're getting free shipping, guys. All you have to do is pay for the item itself. And if you're living in the rest of the world, you buy three items and then shipping is free. But I guarantee you, once you look at this website, you're going to want to buy more than three items. So go check them out, guys. ExtremeWrestlingShirts.com um, That's going to be it for that, guys. I have no more news. Again, look out for part number three tomorrow of WWE Headlines, so that is going to wrap it up for part number two, episode number 10 of WWE Headlines right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, your Canadian wrestling podcast that talks about the WWE and No Holds Barred and anything we say 
pun intended. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at NoHoldsBar, WP. You can follow myself at Real Kyle Masters, and you can follow my co-host at Corbett Cabby as well. If you want to listen to us on the go, YouTube, Stitcher Radio, and Spreaker is where you can find us. Spreaker is a glorious, free podcast app that is available for all Android and Apple devices. It is, again, free to download, free to make a profile, and you can chat with us when you're live on the air and listen to all previous episodes of the podcast. If you want to watch any video versions of the podcast, 2K content, unboxings, anything like that video related is on YouTube.com slash NHBWR. Hit that subscribe button and that bell icon for all upload updates. I'm your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host of WWE Headlines and No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, Kyle Masters, and I will see you guys tomorrow for part number three.